I'm liking this curve up ahead. It's just a lovely scene with the forest on either side. I can hear the river. It just has that west coast rainforest damp feeling. All that kind of stuff that makes a February walk really special on Vancouver Island. For big picture, here's our location, Vancouver Island on the west coast of British Columbia. The little red circle is the rough location of my hike between Parksville and Port Alberni. Here's the ENN Railway's Port Alberni subdivision going from right to left, Parksville to Port Alberni. And up on the right hand side, hugging the coast of the island, is the Victoria subdivision, which works its way up to Courtney. The little red mark is the area of my hike. Here's a closer look between mile 10 in the top right corner and Cameron Lake in the bottom left corner. And the red circle is the start and end of my hike, the park road for Little Qualicum Falls Provincial Park. And in the bottom left, the red circle is my turnaround, the Little Qualicum River Railway Bridge. So there's the extent of my hike. And here's the Little Qualicum Falls Park map. Red circle is my start and end point. You can see the ENN Railway right of way, which goes through the park, the park on either side. And that red circle is the point in my hike where I can see picnic tables, campsites, um, as I'm walking by it on the railway. Little Qualicum Falls Provincial Park. It's mile 10.3 on the ENN Railway's Port Alberni subdivision and I'm heading westward. This hike is going to be two miles out, two miles back. My turnaround is going to be the Little Qualicum River Railway Bridge. This first mile and a half I haven't been on before. It's a lot of uh, long tangent sections. Back in December 2018, there was a very severe wind storm that came through here and impacted the Central Island, but especially this corridor here. And the result was a really bad, um, impassable section because of all the windfall trees. By early 2000, the various authorities had finally been able to agree on a cleanup plan. And so a logging contractor did the cleanup to make this area passable again. So that's just about two years ago. On my right, and probably on my left as well, um, outside of the railway right away, is Little Qualicum Falls Provincial Park. The Little Qualicum River, which is fed by Cameron Lake, is on my right hand side. It hasn't come into view yet, but it will, and there will be a few nice photo opportunities. You can see all the various little pieces of wood left over from the logging cleanup, and evidence of the windstorm's destruction is going to be all around on this hike. I wasn't sure what the lighting was going to be like today, but I'm really happy with this. The objectives of this hike, besides exercise, enjoyment of life, all that kind of stuff, and for me to see this all for the first time, is a couple interesting curiosities for me. One is there's an area along the Little Qualicum River that has had some erosion problems in recent years and so I want to see if the track has been undermined at all. Secondly, I have heard mention that there was at one time a water tower at mile 11.8. So I'm going to look for evidence of that. Looking for the concrete foundation. 
see if there's anything I can find. And there are two bridges at the end of my hike that are just nothing, nothing interesting for me. One of them has a filled in deck that's ballasted, I guess that's the term. There's the Provincial Parks campground right through there. Picnic table is empty as the campground is closed. I am curious how much railway signage will be intact in this section. I wonder how much has been lost to the windstorm windfalls and just vandalism over time. I know that when I was here from the other end, I saw the mile 12 post, but we'll see if I can see mile 11. We are in a gully way up there. Above that is the highway. Here comes the mystery curve for me. I really don't know what's around the corner. Other than that, I think it's a gentle S curve. And then after that, a really long tangent. And I come upon this scene. Moss on trees, different textures. That's the winning combination. Okay, so that shows the extent of that dirt slide. Okay, here's the first bit of encroachment I've seen, and it's because of a recent landslide. This has just fallen down, and it's barely touching the rail. And I can see the river. It's down there. Meanders around. Looking up this slope, get an idea of the tangled mess that it was. I'm enjoying this scenery, and now things are opening up. We're going to curve around to the left, and if I was going to be a fake YouTuber, I'd say something like, Oh, I have a feeling that the mile 11 sign is coming up, but I just ducked my head around a little bit, saw the sign, slow progress today because I'm having a lot of fun with the photographs, just all these textures of the autumn leaves on the ground, and all the various pieces of wood, makes for such an interesting forest scene. And the lighting doesn't suck too bad. That's my optimism. Well, either the railway went to Roman numerals around here and called this mile two, or we got mile 11. And this is a long tangent. And now I've got some direct sunshine breaking in, lighting up the track, warming me. I'll see what these scenes look like on the way back. See if the light is more favorable. Here's a lovely spot with some running water right beside the railway. Okay, a puddle to go through. Lovely for visual, not lovely for railway operations. That's where the water comes from. Nature comes back pretty quickly. There's a recent windfall. 
And that broom plant is pretty healthy. Looking eastward on this long tangent. And now well, let's continue westward. I really like this scene with the swamp and the algae. This is a shorter hike, so I've got more time on the video to go off topic and goof around. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, um, not just railway stuff, but a few other things. Um, I love just history, stuff about tr people's travels, so road trips, stuff like that. And I also enjoy videos about something called van life. So it's basically people that live in vans or converted school buses. I find that kind of stuff really interesting, even though it's completely different from my lifestyle. I think that's why I'm drawn to it. I enjoy making fun observations about all sorts of things in life and I don't want myself to be misinterpreted here so I don't intend any of these comments to be generalizations wide sweeping um, they're just specific examples and um, the key thing for me is I don't take myself too seriously and I like to laugh at myself I've got all sorts of quirks as a YouTube content creator that are easy to parody I strongly believe in, in any content creator's freedom to create and present however they wish. And I also love my freedom to observe and uh, make my own comments on things. So maybe you'll find this amusing, maybe not. I intend this to be fun. I also find the YouTube culture surrounding those types of videos and their creators to be sometimes really amusing when it's um everything in their life is content opportunity to create views things like that or they're done in a real uh, kind of just everything is for sale style and then there's the kind of videos where each successive one kind of goes back and forth between two opposite sentiments Wow, I really love railway walking. This is the greatest thing ever. I'm just so excited that I got into railway walking. And then the next one is, oh man, railway walking is not what I thought it would be. Oh, this is so depressing. This sucks. I think I'm gonna quit. And then just keep going back and forth. That's the formula. The other silly way to do YouTube is overly dramatic um, titles for the video railway completely obliterated by falling trees railway completely destroyed by mother nature you know nice dramatic language using absolute terms that aren't quite true and then there's the YouTube tactic that no one really wants to see me use and that's the sexy thumbnail pose. Just a lovely thumbnail of me in a mankini, a speedo, showing my Molson muscle. No one wants to see that kind of stuff. And yet, that's a big part of YouTube culture. The irrelevant sexy thumbnail. This goofing around is helping me to get through this long nondescript tangent part of my walk. I think what I've discovered with my style of videos is I do them the way that I would like to see them. I'm full on detail. I don't mind if they're overly long. The belief is that the world web is wide and there's got to be other people out there who like things done in the same depth that I like doing them. And so I do the videos for my style and in the hopes that other people will like them and find them useful too. I haven't really paid attention to regular posting routines 
because I make a video when I do a hike. And I do a hike when the weather and my life um, allow it. I like that freedom and simplicity. And I enjoy the comments. I don't enjoy the spam, but I enjoy the people who comment and the people who are regular watchers. Um, who I get used to the comments. I, I know their uh, I know their names, and uh, yeah, that's just part of that community that grows. And I really am privileged that people would take the time to watch some of my videos. I sure appreciate that. And I can see the mile 12 post in the distance, which tells me that I get a nice river view pretty soon. A full dozen miles from Parksville train station is this spot. On the Esquimalt and the Nemo Railways, Port Alberni subdivision. I'm talking about van life videos that I like to watch and van lifers. One of them that watches my videos is a fine guy named Brent. So this is my shout out to Brent. His channel is Brent's, apostrophe S, I think, Van Life. I will try to, oh, I'm gonna say this. I will try to leave a link in the description below. Anyway, Brent's Van Life. Um, he's a regular guy, which is why I like him, um, his videos. He's just a humble, regular guy who, knows how to fix things, knows how to build things. And uh, so it's interesting watching his daily routines as well as his project of building out a school bus. For me, besides interesting content, has to be a quality stand-up person. Otherwise, you're just watching something fake. Here's that spot where the river is visible. Is it just a peekaboo view? Or does it get better? We'll find out. Okay, the back again, on again, off again, peekaboo view or not, here's the better view. Okay, so this is the spot, I think, where the track had some erosion issues. Um, and so I'm going to walk in and uh, take a look carefully. Oh yeah, there's not much on the bank here. It's just hanging over. Yeah, it just hangs over right here. Yeah, I can see. It could be an issue. Let's come to this end. Oh yeah, you can sure see here. Okay, let's carefully do this. Oh yeah. through there. Okay. Okay, before I go around the corner and see the bridges, I'll check out this area and see if there's a safe view back at the erosion problem. Okay, big bank here. No, nope. trees are in the way and that's a good thing because the trees give some stability. Busy Highway 4 is beside me. A Northwest Tankers tandem trailer just went by carrying limestone slurry for the pulp mill in Port Alberni, which comes from a rail car at Nanaimo. Yeah, that could go by train. So this is what the railway calls McBay Creek. And it's called something else on the highway signs and in Google Maps. The 
This is the ballasted deck. There's the highway bridge. It's a lovely cool off area down there after your hike. And just around this corner is Little Qualicum River Bridge. And just around the corner is the trail that goes off to Wesley Ridge. And that's what 95% of the people who park there are going to. A busy day, great day for a hike. To McBay Creek Bridge. This rail is Algoma, Canada, and it's 1949. Here's the 1910 Jordan rail. Yeah, 1910 on the Jordan Rail. Nineteen ten on the Jordan Rail, nineteen forty nine on the main rail. Walking back, shadow time once again. And I'm back to solitude. Bringing back the subject of other YouTube videos that I watch and channels and just the YouTube culture. One that I really enjoy is a creator, his nickname is Foresty Forest. And he's from Alberta, lives in a van, and does epic mountain climbs and just shows that kind of lifestyle of mountaineering while your van is your home. And he's the first one that I really started following. And there's just something about, I think it was just me enjoying all the uh, BC and Alberta back road travel and following along on Google Maps. That's what really brought me to that. Here's a nice view at the erosion area. And there goes the river. And the erosion problem is right here. So where that log is, underneath is not much. I think it's undermined underneath the log. So there's not much space. Lovely sound at mile 12. I'm getting close to where mile 11.8 would be. And so I'm keeping myself mindful of clues for the old water tower if it was here. Okay, so I'll continue on and resume speed. 
I did not see any evidence of an old water tower for foundations or things like that. Talking more about YouTube culture, for some, social media content is an avenue towards selling product or services, and nothing wrong with that, but it does uh, change the motivations, changes, I think, the just the atmosphere of the product, where everything is geared towards uh, creating creating a customer for another product or perhaps the product is the subscription or the YouTube membership and then things are still focused on that and um, I know for me I love the freedom of just doing videos my way for me and not really caring about that kind of stuff so I don't have anything to sell um, if I had some high uh, overall goals for what I do it's mainly to to preserve images and and video of this railway infrastructure at this point in time for the sake of history either because it's going to continue to fade away or because it's going to come back and this is a good documentation of that dormant era so that's probably one of my main goals of doing social media it's just preserving these also just increasing the awareness that there is a railway corridor on Vancouver Island and even though it's been dormant for a while it still exists and is available for future use. Wrapping up the rambling thoughts about YouTube and creating content. I think one of the other reasons I enjoy creating content and uploading onto YouTube is that I really love editing and producing videos and uploading them and presenting. I guess, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Creating, editing, presenting. I love that whole process. Very enjoyable for me. There's a lot of standing water here. Squish, squish. It's the little E&N Creek. All right, mile 11. Which means we're starting the nice curve. Looking behind me, the long straightaway. On the subject of other YouTubers that I enjoy following and subscribing to, one of my other favorites is the channels called Tideline to Alpine. And again, I'll put a link in the description below. But uh, that channel is the van life and uh, just independent living adventures of a person named Amanda and her lovely dog named Frank in a green van named Truck and it's West Coast adventuring but the adventure is simply living life living life in a independent sovereign way and uh, I enjoy it for the BC scenery the BC highway and back roads travel and I enjoy following and supporting her channel and I highly recommend it. This is a nice scene.
I'm just loving all these peekaboo views. All right, there's the park campground. Picnic tables. And here comes the level crossing for the Little Qualicum Falls Provincial Park Access Road. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you have a great day.